Hi everybody, welcome to a very special Prog Report reaction. Uh, we are back. We skipped September. It is now October. And as it turns out, there is a ton of music for us to catch up on. So uh, joining me are Vic, Dan, and Kyle. Hey guys, how are you? Oh, Doing good. great. Hi everybody. All right. So, uh, you know, I think most of you know out there that uh, there was the big announcement of Dream Theater uh, announcing their new album, Parasomnia, which comes out on February 7th. And I think uh, we're going to start there with the first song, Night Terror. We're just going to jump right in because we have a lot of stuff to uh, to cover, right? Uh -huh. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to cover uh, Night Terror. This thing is at a, uh, after just a few days, it was at a million views after one day, which is just to use the word astonishing, yeah. um, but, uh, you know, Night really exciting. I think, it's, I think it's pretty cool to see um, such a great response. We have all checked this out before, but we do want to yeah. just revisit a little bit of it and comment on it. I pulled out a, a couple of sections because obviously we can't listen to all 10 minutes and even the intro's two minutes long before we get to any singing. So uh, I'm just going to jump in right here and, uh, and then we'll listen to a couple of parts. Cool. All right. chorus then there's a whole bunch of uh you know other interplay i mean i look i think it's it just sounds like the song i kind of thought they'd make i think i don't know yeah. it, it, it it fit perfectly for me when i heard it the first time i guess like i don't know what people's expectations were necessarily i see a lot of like positive comments which is good but i was expecting something to sound closer to a view from the top of the world so like a continuation of what they were doing um but I think we got a little bit of that, but there is this nostalgic sound, like Black Clouds era a little bit that it's very emblematic. And I, I feel that with a couple of instruments, not only the drums, of course, but like the organ sound that uh, Jordan, yeah, Jordan uses on this song, on this section actually that we were just listening yeah. to, is amazing and very like, you know, emblematic of that part. I really, really, really enjoy it. See, to me, it sounds almost a little bit more like uh, Six Degrees and even Train of Thought a little bit. Yep. Um, I hear a lot of like, Train of Thought on, on this, too. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Glass Prison, that keyboard part sounds very, you know, typical oh, yeah, you're right. of that. So, but, I, but I was expecting kind of a continuation of Black Clouds because I figured they would kind of come back and kind of pick up where they left off. Uh, I actually like it because it, it, it is, you said, nostalgic of sort of that like post scenes from a memory um era of the band which i i love and i know vic loves so um it's cool it's a great song i think it, it feels like they've not been gone for 15 years which they obviously have not been gone but uh, with mike kind of hopping back in it feels like you know they talk about it's like riding a bike but you know bringing back his snare sound which is always the thing i always talk about but <laughs> yes uh, it does make a difference. Like his snare cuts through a lot more and it's a little more aggressive, a little more direct. And also Mike still has a, a bag of tricks up his sleeve. There's some really cool drum parts that he pulls out on this. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, kudos to them. I want to skip, uh, I want to skip to a, a little bit of the uh, instrumental section here. Yeah. Are we doing the slow uh, down? The slow down part? There's a, uh, eh, I don't know. There's some, some cool <laughs> stuff here. So I want to check this out. I love the drum fills here. This is 
Portnoy. This is what I was missing oh, yeah. in the strong films. Yep. Even the simple one right here. Yeah, the, the triplets. Great sound. The bass sounds amazing, too. Yeah. That's just awesome. I don't care. I just <laughs> got a few. If you don't like that, just something wrong with you. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know. It's good. <laughs> to I me, saw this, you. Go ahead. To, I was going to say, to me, it, it's in, in watching this and just anticipating this, I think of Petrucci's solo album that came out in 2020 and then LTE3 in 21. So there was already that familiarity. But just to see this come together again, it's very emotional for me. It, it, it is nostalgic. Uh, but just to see them do and to do that, to still be doing that kick ass stuff. Uh, and it sounds great. Uh, Andy Sneap is the first time that Portnoy gets to do Dream Theater with Andy Sneap. These guys are just, ah, they, mm -hmm. I, I, I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm a, don't want to go all fanboy, but obviously I am. Yeah, so. no, for sure. And in our case, that we've kept up with Mike, he's been doing stuff like this, like the, the fails and the slowdowns and that kind of thing. Neil Morse band, the Flying Colors, all of his bands. Nice. But to see it back in Dream Theater with like his, I don't know, classic approach to to the editing of the song and where these spots go, I think it makes a huge difference. And we're seeing like a glimpse of it now. And hopefully, when the album comes out, I think we'll get a lot more of like Portnoy isms in general. And that's not even counting just the drums, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's cool I, that he's singing background vocals too. I, I and I know yeah. people used to hate it, but now it's kind of like, oh yeah, it fits again. You know what I mean? It's yeah. yeah. I I remember black back in like Semantic Chaos or Black Clouds when he had like his solo spots. And people were like, oh, why is he doing that? <laughs> yeah, I had, it, it, adds, it, it yeah. adds some character. And I'll say, I I feel like there's a certain elevated level of creativity even over some of the music he's done over the last fifteen years, which I absolutely love. But to me, like the opening segment and some of these instrumental segments, I mean, it's it's definitely prototypically like Mike Portnoy, but there's some stuff that I've not quite heard him do before, which is cool. Um, the comment on YouTube that I was going to mention after that Petrucci like crazy solo is John Petrucci has seemingly been in his prime for 30 years. And I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. he's, he's unreal. I mean, that solo there is like he could have been playing that like as a 25 year old a 35 year old a 55 year old it's it's really he's unbelievable there's like no yeah. slowing that guy down which is crazy and you can hear the bass on this and it oh. sounds great yeah, it sounds that's that's, that's what is, i was noticing the mix is incredible it sounds awesome yeah. yeah all right we could talk about this song forever there's a lot of cool stuff so once again parasomnia comes out february 7th the band kicks off the tour in london october 20th a few of us will be there we're very excited yep. about that and already um, listening yeah. to the song like 12 times just to know the lyrics <laughs> Because they're probably the air drumming. You got to know the air yeah, drumming. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be there doing it. Yep. All right. So we're going to go now to uh, Neil Morse and the Resonance uh, Thieves, the second single from the Noel Hill for a Climber album. The first song was All the Rage. It came out about a month ago. Uh, this song is really cool. If you've heard it, it's, um, it has a different feel to it, a different vibe. Uh, it's really different. I, I think it's cool. It's it's a nice change of pace for him and something that I think a lot of people were wanting to hear, maybe a little bit different. Uh, let's check out a couple of bits from this. I also have to showcase a couple of parts from the song because it changes a lot. So let's just go ahead and, and get to it. You 
Well, then it goes into a whole sort of kind of Pink Floyd solo, it sounds like to me, the next mm -hmm. little bit. Um, and then it goes th there's nuts. no real chorus on this song. It's sort of like a weird, not, a, not yeah. an obvious chorus. I mean, there's a whole really cool breakdown here I'll skip to. Which I think is really cool. Anyway, I like this song, you get man. The it's, idea. Really, it's really fresh for him. Like, there's some, it brings in uh, this kind of weirdness that was in the beginning of Spock's a little bit, yeah. you know? And I think that the big star of the show here is the bass player. And mm. both in the beginning and the thief part, and here, like, his tone is really nice. It's my favorite part of it. I love Neil. I'm very biased, biased towards whatever song he comes out with, whatever lineup he is in. So I love everything about it. The, the, I mean, I don't love the AI stuff in the video, to be honest, but I love everything else, and it's great. So, What's this? Is that a dog? That's my dog scratching the carpet. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what is that noise? Um, yeah, all right. So this is uh, the No Hill for a Climber album. Uh, comes out on November 8th. So this is um, uh, the second song. There's a third song that's like a five-minute song, and then the other two are over 20 minutes. So one is 28 minutes, I want, I think. So, I mean, you're getting a full, you know, prog I mean, they can't release those, so you get these as singles. But uh, I think it has a cool sound so far. This is uh, my favorite song songs. on that album, for what it's worth. I just think it's it's not quite like anything else he's done. Maybe closest to Spock's, you know, somewhere on the second, third, fourth album. But it's cool. It sounds it's, like it, it could have fit on an old Spock's, Spock's yeah. album, you know. All right, Great. next up is um let's see yeah oh, this thing always does this to me hold on the buttons okay move. okay um yeah so frost uh idiot box the third single from the life in the wires album which comes out on uh october 18th this week uh double concept album a whole bunch of proggy goodness on this uh we did review this record we think it's awesome uh, just one of my favorites of the year. I think it's maybe yeah. my favorite Frost album too. Um, so this is uh, uh, Christian Rios, this is his second video, uh, our, our good friend uh, for this album. He did the first video as well. Uh, should we go ahead and check it out? This is a good heavy track here. Which oh, I yeah. It's a nice one. This album rules, dude. Great. The video is amazing. The guy was holding a little Levy Award. It's perfect. <laughs> I don't know how Christian comes up with these these videos, man. He's really good at these videos. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I love the sound. Love the keyboard sounds. I love the whole thing. It just it's so good. It's 
I, yeah, I can't dude, say much more than that. I, I think they might just have my favorite like synth sound ever. It's just amazing the way they mix it with the heaviness and stuff. Frost is just so such a unique band. And this album is a long album. And when it's over, you're still like, okay, so is there more? <laughs> you know, it's really, yeah. really nice. Flow super Guys, well. please get this record. I'm telling you, yes, check yeah. out this album. It's great. You will not be disappointed. It's it's just an album you have to check out. Yeah, I yeah. don't think there's um, any of us in the Prog Report group there's like that don't love this album. And we have like very different backgrounds. Yeah. Like, oh, well. Yeah. Uh, yes, know? we all converge on on Frost. This is where we yeah, all meet. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this yeah. is Neil Wars, I guess, right? So. right? Yeah, outside of outside of Neil, Frost seems to land us all at the same kind of like uh well, you know, it, it's yeah, maybe it, even it, maybe it, even it, more than Neil at this stage. I mean, this this album is very good. It also reminds me of uh Queens of the Stone Age's Songs for the Deaf. Um it kind of has this like radio guy in between all the tracks so and there's something about the, like the momentum of a concept album that's not just so overtly a concept album but it's like more of a sort of thematic musical mm -hmm. concept and it just it moves from track to track daniel said it well like when it's done and it's not a short album but you're sort of like oh, i want to hear that again so mm -hmm. that's kind of rare i think in this day and age <laughs> so there's really nothing on it that in the middle of the concept album where you're like, I, I'm going to skip all these, so like this song, I'm going to skip this song. I, I had no feeling of that uh, throughout. Now, obviously over, over time you start to pick out a couple of favorites and that's going to happen. But um, uh, yeah, it's great. So the two things that really jump out at me in this album, Jim's vocals. Uh, I didn't realize how much I missed them in past in more recent uh, albums, but also the, the drums, there's something about the mix and the drums. Blundell's drums are just brought a little bit further forward and they're just absolutely kicking. So it's it's looking looking forward to this whole thing. Yeah. So Wait, this uh, album, Life in the Wires, comes out this uh, Friday, October 18th. So uh, if you haven't heard it, you can check it out then. All right. Moving forward, uh, track number four on our list. Are you saying the drums matter? <laughs> his snare sounds amazing all right go ahead it does Sorry. uh we're going over to uh beardfish and the track Ugh. torrential downpour the second track from the album songs for beating hearts which comes out on november 1st it's the band's first album in nine years um dan i mean I, you know you're the sort of the expert on beardfish you want to you want to talk about this one a little bit um, I actually, I haven't listened to this album enough. We got an what? advanced copy and I've listened to it. I want to say like three times and it has sort of a difference. Like, I mean, it's classic Beardfish, but it has sort of a different sound, but I, I like it very much. And I remember this song in particular being one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rickard's back and he's doing all his crazy stuff and the crazy instrumentals. There's some added like new voices in there, which... Uh, make it very fresh and new. Um, but yeah, Torrential Downpour is one of the good ones for sure. And this song is sort of a very moody, almost classic rock sounding track mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, and uh, the, it starts off kind of dark. Yeah. I'm going to kick into where they sort of get to play, the playing a little bit. But um, yeah, it's cool. Man, he's a you know underrated singer. Good. Lord. Oh yeah, for sure. Like his voice, tremendous. Is great. Yeah, 
and then it goes into a, a crazy like funny like folk thing you yeah. know it's it's a, an interesting album for sure but like that's not surprising at all if you're a fan of them or have heard them before in any capacity honestly because their stuff is definitely out there and this song as roy was saying is more like a classical rock sounding and it sounds like very like homemade music you know like ro uh, the roots in a way um but yeah man i, I, th I think it's kind of grateful I dead Fish. sounding i feel like i feel like yeah, i had a like, grateful yeah. dead sound a little bit yeah uh, maybe the, yeah. the raspy vocals yeah so uh kyle do you want to say something about it? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you look uh, like you wanted to well, look like no, you were about this. The, the video is a little disappointing. I don't know. He could have been bothered to take a shower before, I think. So, uh, you know, he's I'm taking like, a shower in the video. He's, that's yeah, what he's that's, doing. He's, he's dripping wet. Yeah. What, yeah, what is going on there? Um, it, oh, torrential, torrential downpour, downpour Kyle. Downpour. The title yeah, of the song. Come, come on, on man. man. Did you know <laughs> that I was, I, as, a, as a late teen, I was in a band called Downpour. True story. Um, and we were terrible, but um, yeah. no, it, it's good. <laughs> uh, um, I, I think everything you say is true. I have found some of their music in past albums to be a little bit more kind of electric and energetic. This one's like a little bit more of a vibe. I mean, you kind of call it out with Grateful Dead. It's sort of like a little bit more of an intentional sort of mellow approach. Um, but the guy can sing, they can play. It's a cool album. So there you go. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um we're going to go to Devin Townsend and the track Gratitude, which, as we're doing this video, dropped today. It's not the coffee third song. Uh, nope, that is, that is not a single. This is the third uh, single from the album Power Nerd. Um, you know, look, I just actually, this album, having we've had a chance to listen to this album, I like this album a lot. Um, I think there's a lot to enjoy on it. And... A lot of it is, interestingly enough, and he's even mentioned this, this is sort of like an 80s power ballad kind of sounding song, really. Um, the guitars are almost Def Leppard-ish, you know, at times, and it's bombastic and epic and a lot of vocal harmonies. I, I dig it. So let's go ahead and check out. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead, Mark, here a little bit. Power um, nerd. But this is uh, this is cool. <laughs> I mean, pretty straightforward, simple kind of track, but just we never know what you're getting with like Devin, it. dude. You no, you know. don't. <laughs> you really don't. I wasn't expecting this. I haven't heard any of like the new songs, uh, and I was ready for some like oh kind of sound, you know, for some reason. And then you got hit with this. It to me it was a good surprise. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely give it a try because uh, I'm not the biggest Devin fan. I really like some of his stuff, but it's kind of hit or miss for me. But yeah, this sounds interesting and different. I, I like it. Yeah, this sounds like Smashing Pumpkins to me. This would be like on, you know, Siamese Dream or something. I don't That's hear that at all. Me. Really? They never. No, they That's never had good vocals like this. <laughs> oh well okay so vary the vocals a bit but that's sort of like acoustic guitar but that's the whole thing this is this, okay all right musically yeah okay yeah i'll give you the music musical part but vocally i mean you can't it's, you can't compare like they can't he can't well, sing billy, billy, billy corgan maybe what he lacks in technical ability he makes up for in sort of um epic approach perhaps but um i hear a little bit of that approach to this but yeah great song uh this album i actually keep coming back to it and listening to it even though I am very much like Daniel, and then maybe even more so in the hit or missness of I, I find that I really like this album. I just do. I, you know what? I, I want to go back to the beginning because just these guitars, they're so Def Leppard. It makes me laugh. This is the beginning of this. You see me on top of the world. Now that's, that's an 80s Def Leppard guitar sound. 
But anyway. I just think that's yeah. cool. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Cool vocals. But not so, as cool uh, as we're, what we're getting next. It comes out get... on October 25th, the album Power Nerd. Um, if you're if you're a Devin fan, I think you already are interested in this. And, and if it's, you know, if you're like some of the people in our group are here that uh, are hit or miss with Devin, I feel like this album is sort of straight down the middle. It is light work was a bit mellow and didn't have any craziness on it really uh empath was really crazy this is this is sort of down the middle center more approachable Devin. right yeah yeah so there's a little bit of crazy there's a lot of melody and he's just great so i think it's uh worth checking out it's great <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna I go on to the last one which is a favorite <laughs> of uh of ours here you'll love um, it oh let's go yeah, Let's the go. new uh, Vola, which comes out also Animal. on November 1st. Uh, the album is called Friend of a Phantom. Um, it's the, the singles have been incredible. The yeah, the, the singles have been incredible. I, I, do, I, I struggle in where to place this band. I love this band, and I love the singer. I love the sound. I love all the songs we've heard so far from the album. Uh, I still don't know why they're a prog band. They don't sound like it to me. They sound like, and like a metal band that should be on norm popular radio, like right now. I I don't really. I, I hear don't a lot of know why. It, dude. If metal had a pop Where? radio, there's no menu. no, but there's no like there's no well, soloing. There's they, they get aggressive every now and then with some vocals, which is very common with a lot of bands now. They're they're, um, from, they're from Denmark, so naturally. Maybe that's why, because they're not American. They get they get uh, no, like. I, I there's, think a little, like there's a little there's a little genty uh, flair. Yeah, that's the thing. It? It's it's proggy in a modern way with the genty stuff, and so they have like the the syncopated rhythm stuff that goes underneath like the verses. Uh, you know, you you hear it a little bit. At in times, the I feel like they almost have because of the keyboard sounds they use, almost like it's almost like if Linkin Park didn't have the rap parts yeah i don't know i, I think that's, that's i mean I numb and stuff like that it's not that far away i i don't i'm just saying and i'm and i'm and i like lincoln park especially the early records but um uh i i this song i like a lot i think it's the first song on the album it's amazing uh yeah, and it it's, features it's uh it i features just think, a guest, guest vocalist i just think a band like this it's kind of hard for them to sort of i i, I think in the prog world it's gonna have a stable following kind of outside of Prague. i don't know if it quite fits with you know i, I noticed that uh anders from in flames is there in flames is a band that at one point was like melodic death metal and now they're more of a for lack of a better description you know pop metal kind of, you know pop metal <laughs> again pop means popular there's nothing popular you know yeah. about metal anymore everybody just follows it because it's all niche you know related but yeah yeah it, it's i I enjoy them um, kind of yeah. old school when it comes to saying, you know, is this and I hear the genty description that you guys are giving. But um, I, I think they sort of teeter on that on that line where eh, they're close. They're they're For me, they're more prog adjacent. I, th I, I think yeah, they're holding I, on I, to the prog label because the early the, their first couple records were a bit more proggy. They had right. they had actual prog songs with weird time yeah, signatures and, as, and things. They right. don't do that anymore. They don't they don't. Right. As a as a big fan of their like whole discography, I, I see a lot of proggier moments than there are on this album. But there are a few songs on this album that have like very great proggy moments. With, like, and I think that goes down not just to, like okay, we may not have like crazy time signature changes and all that, but we do have a, a, a proggy instrumentation down to the keyboard sounds they use, to the bass songs they use. Their influences are clearly like. That progressive in general, either more modern or classic. There's a lot of a little rush stuff in there, you know. So I, I, I I'm saying it. I'm actually saying it not as a criticism. I'm saying it in the fact that I feel like they should be bigger. Oh, I, yeah. I feel like I feel like it has every song in this album could be a hit. It's mm -hmm. it's commercial as hell for based on the, the standards of what rock radio is today. And I, I just think they should be bigger. And I'm, I'm wondering if the prog label actually hurts them in this regard. But anyway. When Volo um, tours, whom do they tour with? 
Wheel was they recently toured with Wheel, okay. which I'm, yeah. I should have seen, but it kind of fits, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's check out the song. Um, good stuff. Vola. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, like stuff, all the man. rhythm, like the rhythmic stuff, awesome. it's all very proggy, you know, the way that they put like it fit in the bars. I love the video, the lighting, yeah. all of it. It's so good. Um, I think they're awesome. Yeah, they're, they're really great. great. Their, their drummer, uh, Adam Johnsy. Oh, my is, God. He's uh, so good. It's oh, a minor symbol in Dorsey. And he's I mean, I don't know. There's probably 300 drummers that come across my feed on Instagram because my feed is about 50% drumming, 50% orthodontics, 50% drumming. Um, <laughs> but he has this really obnoxious, like, um, I don't know, like cattle skull, like tattoo, and he's always shirtless. But he's a great drummer. He kind of reminds <laughs> he kind of reminds me of the drummer of Leprous. Um, yeah, like yeah. Bard. Yeah. Similar style. Yeah, yeah. similar. Bard Kolstad or whatever. So, like, very, like, high energy, just, like, Given it 110 percent at all times, and to I me this is very proggy. So I don't know. I highly really? recommend uh, yeah, maybe. everyone to to check out his drum playthrough uh, of the song "I Don't Know How We Got Here," which is my favorite song in the album, probably or maybe a second favorite. Uh, it's kind of a ballad-ish. It has like a, a yeah. crazy prog rhythm in in the background, and he does so much with the drums that you don't hear if you don't pay attention. But if you see it on the video. It's so much better. It elevates the song like tenfold. Yeah, I gotta check that out. He's a he's yeah. a really impressive drummer to me because he comes up with actual interesting rhythms that you wouldn't drum think wise, of for yeah, songs like this. Twenty four light years is one of my favorite drum patterns in a song. Yeah, you know, it's just you wouldn't have thought that that, that's that what song, the song is amazing. Have. And and like I don't know how we got here is kind of a mm -hmm. similar vibe to Twenty Four Light Years, and it has yeah. a lot of that in their discography. And he's a big part of it. Like the, their kitchen, the, like the, the bass and drums, they come up with some cool, cool stuff to complement the vocal melodies and all that. It's really yeah. He comes up with a lot that contributes to their music, and and yeah. uh, Asgard the singer is is just really unique right. and different. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, love this one. Their, um, kitchen. their kitchen is that a phrase for the rhythm section? Their kitchen <clears throat> is that what you said? Uh, I mean, it might have been lost in translation, but that's how we call it. Like what they're cooking know. up? Oh. I like yeah, it. Yeah, what they're cooking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I dig that. All right. It, it so, um, yeah, that, that's it. That's We covered six, uh, I think, amazing releases. I mean, uh, a lot of stuff that's great coming out towards the end of this year. And then, of course, we have the Dream Theater to look forward to next year. So, yeah. Um, Good stuff, guys. Was that yeah, six? Man. Did we already do six? That was it. We already did six. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So we've we've gone all this time and not an Opeth song. And that was about to say we did that, we did cover Opeth. We did we covered Opeth in the last one we did, uh, the paragraph one song, um, and now they've released I think uh, one uh, or two more yeah. since then. No, just um, the three. Yeah. So yeah, just the the third one, and uh, yeah. I think uh, and that one got delayed. I think it comes out now November eleventh. I want to say no twenty second. Like Oh, 22nd that's right yeah um because it was supposed to be out a few weeks earlier how um, do you know that cool i i, I um, may like opa a little bit yeah. this is yeah, some yeah. good this is some good music right here i enjoyed like i listened to vola on the uh i was a couple flights this past weekend and 
I listened through it a few times and I, it got better with each progressive listen. It's, it's not like my standard go-to vocal approach, especially like this kind of screamo type stuff. Um, but I feel like they do it in a tasteful way. And obviously that vocalist is so technically capable. Um, in some ways it reminds me of like the band disturbed. I know it's like different, but I don't. Yes. Like, I know. I see yeah. similarities. Yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Like they're yeah. proggy, but they also could be like that. I mm -hmm. it's, they fit both to me. Yeah, yeah. Like at rest, I don't want to listen to disturbed, but there's like that, you know, like their cover of sound of silence or something like when you actually watch it and you see how technically like, distinct it is you're sort of like well that's pretty impressive you know the first so. album by disturbed i absolutely loved i thought i'd never heard anything like it it was so cool then the second album i was like all right they did it again and by the third album i was like all right i don't need to hear them anymore because they're literally making the same album now that's it they've they've run out of ideas it, but it they're huge so good for them for like good for them or, you but know, but i do think i hear what you're saying about that early 2000s sort of um you said lincoln park maybe disturbed like whatever you call that like it is sort of like a modern almost yeah, like a new metal rock. movement yeah new metal movement yeah. It, it sort of leans into that but it's also very genty and there's enough prog there to kind of tie it together but yeah I, I get what you're saying like why couldn't they be you know kind of leading an arena tour i mean they at least fit into that it's catchy enough yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah. well who knows they might get there maybe they will right yeah i hope i wish them all the best anyway uh all right everybody so i uh, hope you enjoyed this episode uh please leave us your comments what you liked what you didn't like any other stuff we missed what you're looking forward to all of that um and if uh, you missed our recent wheel of prog videos check those out subscribe and uh, hopefully we'll be back with a report from london uh oh, yeah. so we'll see London. A few days baby all right see everybody bye bye later Hey, thanks for checking out the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, wherever you get your podcasts, follow us on all our socials, and progreport.com, and we'll see you all again real soon. Thanks.